Hi, YouTubers. It's Evan next video today. So uh, I'm in the garage at my parents' house. Guess what I'm doing right now? Smoking nice big ass cigars. The big ass cigar of life. Anyway, the house of keeping, uh, smoking this uh, Padron cigar, a nice big ass cigar. Yep, this is a Padron Damaso. Uh, or Damaso, uh, yeah, Padron Damaso, uh, and it is a nice big ass cigar. It's a Connecticut version, and I am drinking right now uh, some sparkling water, and no, that's not alcohol, so a little bit too early for alcohol. Anyway, so I'm in the garage again at my parents' house, big ass cigar. So, it's a Friday afternoon at my parents' house, you know, here in Massachusetts, or Massachusetts, it'd be so damn cold here, damn hot here, damn, 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 and uh, yeah, so Friday afternoon, it is um, a nice, uh, very breezy, very breezy, uh, nice warm day up here, uh, yeah, so nice day overall, it's I'd say probably in the 70s today, maybe the high 60s, low 70s. It's a very nice uh, big ass day, like a big ass cigar. Just being silly ass like a big ass cigar. Anyway, so that is uh, first off. So I want to do a recap of my week. So what happened with my week? So first off, um... I worked uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, at Roach Brothers doing the carbs, nice big ass carbs, like the big ass cigar. So uh, a lot of people ask me, hey, Smoking Assy, like what do you actually do at the store? Like are you a bagger or are you a cart person? So what I mean by a cart person or a, a you know person in the lot or you know doing carts, when I say big ass carts, like the big ass cigar, not big ass farts, but big ass carts. Yeah, big ass farts, just being silly ass like the big ass, big ass cigar. Basically what that means is collecting carriages. So. I'm basically in the parking lot collecting carriages and you know <clears throat> you know walking around getting carriages and helping people with their groceries so that's what I do for a, a occupation so that's essentially what I do for a quote unquote living so even though it's not full time anyway and then uh, so I work Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday do the car size big ass car like the big ass cigar and then um wednesday afternoon i um came home and i was done with my work week had a nice um relaxing afternoon and then uh thursday oh sorry about the glare on the camera really really bright sorry about that shit. so really really bright anyway uh so Thursday, I saw my counselor, a nice big ass counselor, like the big ass cigar. And obviously, I'm not required to see a counselor. I choose to see a counselor out of my own free will. And not everybody who sees a counselor or a therapist is crazy or cuckoo, whatever. So, so yeah, I saw my therapist, or my not my therapist, my counselor. Sorry, my counselor, a nice big ass counselor. And uh, we went to uh, the uh, Wegmans, which is the grocery store. And uh, it was a fun time. Uh, I had um, some nice food. Uh, Wegmans has brought back their, um, at least at the location I go to, they've brought back their um, their uh, Asian buffet, which is basically like Asian food. I'm not sure if it's really supposed to be like Thai food or like Chinese food or like um, you know Japanese food or like Korean food, but it's kind of like a mix of all the three or four. And basically, you know, you can get some rice, you know, pork fried rice. You you can get some like, you know, kung pao chicken, which is Chinese. You can also get some like beef, nice big ass beef, like the big ass cigar. You know, you can get like, you know, noodles, that kind of crap. But um, obviously there's certain things I can't I can have and certain things I can't have because obviously I'm gluten free. So um, the rice I can have, the beef and the kung pao chicken I can have. Uh, Asian food is kind of tricky because you have to be careful Because a lot of Asian food has soy sauce, and a lot of Asian food has um, added uh, uh, flavorings that have uh, wheat. So uh, Asian food is kind of tricky. And also, uh, when, you, when you go to an actual Asian restaurant, like a Japanese restaurant, uh, or like a Thai restaurant, or like a Chinese restaurant, uh, 
Um, a lot of times there's kind of a language barrier. Uh, obviously, Wegmans, the people are, you know, they're, they, they speak good English, you know. Obviously, the majority of people are American. And I'm not trying to be prejudiced at all, believe me. I'm not trying to be, like, hateful or prejudiced, whatever. But... Uh, Unfortunately, some Chinese places or some like uh, Oriental, um, you know, fast, not fast food, but like uh, restaurants, uh, there's kind of a language barrier between what you're trying to explain to them. Like, for example, I'm not going to say the name of the restaurant, but there is a restaurant uh, near where I live. It's kind of like a, a Chinese place. It's a nice big ass restaurant, like the big ass cigar. And um, I know for a fact there are things on that menu that are gluten-free, air quote gluten-free. Uh, unfortunately, due to the language barrier, because the people in there speak um, very heavy like Mandarin or like heavy Chinese, you know, which is Mandarin, which is a type of Chinese language. Unfortunately, there's kind of a language barrier, and we've asked them a couple times, you know, is there anything on the menu that's gluten-free? And the, the first thing they say is, uh, no, nothing gluten-free on this menu, nothing gluten-free, uh, which is not really the most polite way to say it, whatever. So, uh, I mean, I don't think they're trying to be dicks, whatever, but it's like, you know, uh, um, so we've asked them a couple times, and I know for a fact because, you know, there are things on the menu that are you know, gluten sensitive, air quote gluten sensitive. When I say something's gluten sensitive, I'm saying it's not made with gluten, but it hasn't passed, you know, FDA inspections to meet the legal definition of gluten free 20 parts per million. So that's what gluten sensitive basically means. Um, so, you know, I've asked them a couple times, you know, is there anything gluten free on the menu? And the first thing they say is, oh, nothing, nothing, nothing gluten free, nothing gluten free, nothing gluten free. And, um, We've asked them a couple times, and uh, they actually say, well, there are things on the menu that are not made with gluten, but the reason we don't advertise it at all is because of the whole cross-contamination issue. See, most people who are allergic or sensitive or intolerant or celiac actually give a fuck about cross-contamination. See, I'm one of the very few people who is celiac. I'm one of the very, very few people who is celiac. I'm one of the very, very few people who celiac who really doesn't give a fuck about, you know, whether something is cross-contaminated. What I care about in terms of a meal is, number one, is it, most importantly, is it made with wheat or barley or rye? And number two, is there any obvious signs of cross-contamination. Like if there was a noodle or, for example, a piece of bread in my soup, obviously I wouldn't eat the frickin' soup because I obviously know it's contaminated. So, but in terms of like flour in the atmosphere, you know, flour in the atmosphere, oh crap. Ash fell already. Yeah, kind of a flowery ash. Um, in terms of like flour in the atmosphere, or like for example, um, you know, common kitchen areas, common fry later, uh, common, you know, uh, shared utensils. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't care at all. I don't care if they're be if it's prepared in a common kitchen area, which is unusual for somebody who has celiac, because the vast majority of people who have celiac actually do give a fuck, you know, they actually do care if there is cross-contamination because most people react to it badly. So the whole freaking point is, is um, yeah, so it's kind of a language barrier with some restaurants and also other restaurants have certain types of liabilities So, uh, some restaurants are a little bit more open about it than other, other restaurants. Uh, like, for example, my parents and I, back in 2017, uh, around the time I got my apartment, back in, like, February 2017, we um, went to this uh, place uh, kind of near where I live. I'm not going to say which restaurant it is, but I'm not just going to say it was like, kind of like a breakfast diner, like a breakfast diner, like a diner restaurant. You know, like, you can get, like, like eggs, you know, bacon, sausages, you know, home fries, nice big-ass home fries, like the big-ass cigar. And, you know, um, they said, oh, yeah, we can actually, we can actually make, 
uh, pretty much everything here uh, gluten sensitive. So for example, they could, they could make like gluten free toast, gluten free French toast, gluten free um, you know waffles, gluten free pancakes, you know nice big ass pancakes like the big ass cigar. Oh, we could make like you know gluten free omelet that kind of crap. But again, they don't really advertise it. They don't say on their menu, like, we can make everything, you know, here in terms of the, you know, like, the bread products, like the pancakes, nice big-ass pancakes, like the French toast. We can make everything gluten-sensitive. Again, they really don't advertise it because, again, the vast majority of people who are celiac, the vast majority of people who are severely intolerant or whatever word you want to use for it, allergic, whatever, um, they actually give a fuck, you know, they actually care about it, they actually give a rat's ass, like the big ass cigar, and they actually care about it. So, like I was reading a forum once online, or not, a, was it a forum, or was it like a blog? It was basically like, you know, oh, I found out that Domino's, you know, Domino's, the restaurant, I'm sure many people know what a Domino's is, a fucking Domino's is, you know, has... They have a gluten-free pizza, but then I found out, I think this was actually posted on celiac.com or celiac.org, whatever it's called, and um, basically um, they said, oh yeah, I found out the Domino's was serving gluten-sensitive pizza now, but I found out it was prepared in a common kitchen area, so I can't have it. See, again, most people, the vast majority of people who are celiac actually give a flying rats you-know-what about cross-contamination, the vast majority of people care. It's just that I'm the oddball out, the odd man out. Who doesn't really care about cross-contamination? I don't care if something is, you know, prepared in a common kitchen area with a shared fry later. Like I was at Wendy's uh, last week, you know, the, the restaurant Wendy's, nice big ass Wendy's, like the big ass cigar. And you know, they have like these uh, Baconator fries and it says on their website, their French fries are gluten sensitive. You know, they're not directly made of gluten. Uh, and obviously the bacon itself is bacon. It's bacon, you know, freaking bacon, a nice big ass bacon, like the big ass cigar. And you know, I had the French fries and again, they're not made with anything, they're not made of wheat. You know, some French fries are made with like seasonings and contain wheat, but not these French fries. And again, you know, they're, they're gluten sensitive, but most people who are celiac will flat out refuse. They will not, they will flat out refuse because they're prepared in a, in a shared fry later with the bread and chicken. You know, they serve like spicy chicken sandwiches, uh, you know, nice big ass sandwiches like the big ass cigar and they're preparing that shared fry later. So actually most people give a crap, you know, they actually give a shit, you know, so. So that's the kind of the issue with, oh my God. I'm sorry about the ashes just falling everywhere. That's one thing I don't like about Connecticut cigars uh, is the ash just falls everywhere. So uh, uh, one thing about Habanos or um, not, not Cubans, but, uh, you know, you know, like Habano cigars and uh, Maduro cigars and Escoro is, or, you know, other types of cigars is it, the ash stays on for much longer. Kind of goes everywhere. It's kind of like a freaking mess. Yeah, the ash is falling everywhere. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a language barrier with, uh, back to what I was saying uh, about certain restaurants, like, um, you know, like Asian restaurants is unfortunately... is um, there, there's kind of a language barrier because see, when you say to somebody in a restaurant, and again, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm not trying to sound like a racist dick, whatever, uh, but, uh, oh, I guess I'm a cat outside. <laughs> nice big ass cat, like the big ass cigar. So like when you say to somebody in a restaurant uh, where there's a language barrier, uh, for example, they might be Japanese, they might be Chinese, they might be Mandarin, whatever, or Korean. When you say to them, is something gluten-free or something gluten-sensitive, see the way they're interpreting it in their language is, is it, does it meet the legal definition of, and this can, this, this, this can go for both um, people with a language barrier and also people who don't have a language barrier, even like Wegmans, like fucking Wegmans, 
you know, basically the way they interpreted the way they interpret it is you have a life-threatening allergy, you have a life-threatening intolerance, and you need something to be to be gluten-free to the FDA standards of 20 parts per million, prepared in an entirely sterilized kitchen, you know, completely sterilized, nothing touching it, uh, completely FDA approved with a fucking FDA stamp on it. That's the way they interpret it. The way I'm asking the question is, number one, most importantly, is it made with gluten? Is it actually made with wheat flour, most importantly? And number two, you know, when I eat it, is there any obvious signs it's cross-contaminated? You know, there might be like, you know, traces of like, you know, parts per million, but I don't really give a crap about that or shit about that. But is there like, you know, is there obvious like, you know, crumbs or like a noodle or like a cracker or like, you know, a nice big ass cracker or like the big ass cigar, you know, something obvious that would indicate like, obviously if I was eating mashed potatoes and I saw a piece of breaded chicken, I obviously would take it off. So, but see the way they interpret it. The way they interpret it is, number one, you have a life-threatening allergy or a life-threatening, you're like a little kid with like a peanut allergy who if they, if you so much as eat, this is the way they view you, if you so much as eat a crumb of bread or you know, wheat, you're going to burst on hives, you're going to stop breathing, you're going to start vomiting all the place, and then you're going to sue their ass. It's like you're going you're to take them to court and sue their ass for failing to warn you about the dangers. That's the way they view you as the customer. So, and obviously they're just being careful, being careful ass, like the big ass cigar, because obviously they don't want to get sued, they obviously don't want to end up in, in any kind of lawsuit. But that's the way they view you, is they think, oh, you're somebody who's super, 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 uh, you know, sensitive, and if you so much as, if, if this, you know, this, uh, I don't know, this hot and sour soup at a Chinese place even has a speck, like a speck of, like, bread, you're going to, like, pass out, black out, and start vomiting all the table and choke on your own vomit. That's the way they view it. So, it, so I mean, unfortunately, that's just unfortunately how a lot of, uh, you know, restaurants, both, you know, with a, a cultural barrier or also a cultural language barrier, and also just in, in general, how a lot of like, when they, when you say you have an allergy or you have intolerance or you have a sensitivity or a celiac, whatever, uh, You know that's that's the way they that's the way they um, kind of view it is oh you have a super 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 life threatening uh, you know intolerance or allergy so uh, I, I guess that's the way that a lot of places view it so uh, I mean some places are really good about it uh, you know there's one place near me which is kind of like oh sorry I had to crack my knuckles um, one place is kind of like a steakhouse. Uh, uh, and they're very, very good about it. You know, we just tell them, oh, I have a gluten allergy. The way I phrase it when I go to a restaurant, the way I phrase it when I sit down at a sit-down restaurant, whether I'm with my father or whether I'm with, um, say, my counselor, or the way I phrase it when I go to, like, a sit-down restaurant by myself, is I have a gluten allergy or gluten intolerance. I don't, I don't even dare say the C word, not that C word, not that C word, but, um... Not obviously not cock, obviously so, but inter or crap, but um, in terms of the C word I was thinking of was celiac. So I don't even even remotely even mention that I have celiac because that's going to put a big red flag in their head that oh you're like a little kid of like a peanut butter allergy. So. So, and, and yes, there are some people who are celiac, who are life-threatening. Like, if I so much as eat a crumb, I'm going to be spending the next three days in the bathroom, you know, shitting my brains out and having diarrhea and be, I mean, vomiting for the next three days. So, 
So yeah, that's the way I phrase it when I go to a, uh, to a restaurant. I don't even mention the C word. Again, not that C word. I mention, I just say that I have a gluten allergy. Again, I know it's not really called an allergy. My friend Merch on Discord said it's really not referred to as an allergy. It's more of an intolerance or a sensitivity, but I just refer to it as a gluten allergy just to put their minds at ease that I'm not going to like pass out and black out. <sighs> you know, I'm not going to like, you know, pass out or black out or, you know, you know, start like, you know, going into like anaphylactic shock, you know, because that's their concern is, oh, you're going to go into like anaphylactic shock and we're going to have to like call the paramedics, call the, you know, the emergency, you know, 911 and, you know, transport you to the hospital and give you like an EpiPen injection. So that's their, their concern because there are some, you know, like little kids who are allergic to like peanut butter, for example, or like have like a peanut allergy or like a shellfish allergy where it's like, you know, oh, they could die from this, you know. So anyway, so that's the way I phrase it is I have a gluten allergy. I just call it a gluten allergy. Because again, I'm not somebody who's highly sensitive. I'm not somebody who's gonna like black out if I so much as eat a crumb of gluten. So that's my little rant about that. Is it is a little bit frustrating when you go to, because there's a lot of places that I would like to go out to, like that Chinese place that's in my town, not gonna say the name of it, I would really like to get takeout from there sometime or like get to like actually eat there in person. But unfortunately, they're just not very open about I'm not going to say the name of the restaurant, restaurant because obviously that's doxing, whatever. But, um, you know, they're not they're, they're just not very open about the whole uh, allergy thing. So anyway, uh, so that's my little rant about that. So after going to Wegmans on Thursday, um... I um, went to a different store and then uh, came home to my apartment. Uh, and then uh, today I had to get blood drawn uh, for my uh, psychiatrist. So I um, had to get blood drawn for my psychiatrist and uh, to check one of my uh, medication levels. And um, that was kind of a interesting um, ordeal because uh, the first place I went to wouldn't draw my blood. And then the, finally the second place I went to would draw my blood. So. Uh, Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take off the bands. One sec, YouTubers, just give me one sec. Have to just take off the bands. Just so I don't smoke through the bands. Oh, come on. Where the hell is it? Oh, come on. Kidding me? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so anyway, enough of the cigar. So uh, yeah, so then my dad picked me up today and we went to the typical ass liquor store in town. I got a cigar, I also got um, some uh, cider, some hard cider. They were, not, they were not doing tasting yet. So we went around like uh, 1.30 or so, 1.15 and they weren't doing tasting yet. Um, and then we went to the uh, grocery store, you know, Roach Brothers, and, um, you know, we uh, did some shopping uh, and then um, came back to my parents' house. So, anyway, so... So yeah, not, not a whole lot else to talk about. <clears throat> I am uh, happy it's finally the weekend and I, um, you know, I'll have, um, you know, from today until Sunday off, that'll be probably be working, uh, probably be working, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I also, um, you know, because, because not this week, but last week was, um, uh, <clears throat> was more, <clears throat> excuse me, was Memorial Day. 
I got a, I got time and a half for Memorial Day, so I got a nice uh, paycheck uh, this week, or a nice direct, they call it a direct deposit. It's a direct deposit, so I got a direct deposit uh, from, uh, you know, the company, and uh, uh, it was a nice, um, you know, extra money. So I'm not, I'm not gonna say how much I make, obviously that's private, you know. Uh, Um, so anyway, so yeah, I am, I'm very happy, um, that I, um, got some extra money, uh, for Memorial Day, and, uh, yeah, so that is about it, so, so have a nice day, YouTubers, pretty fucking cool, bye.